Hi, my name is Jesper, thank you for watching, and in this video I will be talking about the pharmacology of the most important inotropic agents. First of all, an inotropic agent is a drug or a medication that positively influences the contraction of the myocardial cells. This can, for example, be useful in heart failure, where the heart does not sufficiently contract. The first drug that we will be talking about is digoxine. Digoxine is part of the cardiac glycoside drugs, and it exists as a natural form, which we call digoxine, and as a semi-synthetic form in the case of methyldigoxine. Digoxine was isolated in 1930 from the Digitalis lanata plant. Its major function is blocking a sodium-potassium ATPase pump on the myocardial cells, which then again leads to calcium accumulating within the cell. We will now go into detail about the pharmacological mechanism of this. Breaking down the pharmacological mechanisms into more details, we will first start with an action potential that will reach our cardiomyocyte. When this action potential reaches the cardiomyocyte, it will cause calcium channels to open. The opening of calcium channels allows for calcium to go into the cell by traveling down its concentration gradient. This happens because calcium is naturally more abundant outside the cell. So we say it flows into the cell via flowing down its concentration gradient. When calcium travels into the cell, they can bind to a receptor within the cytosol that is located on an organelle which is called the sarcoplasmic reticulum. The sarcoplasmic reticulum is essentially the cardiac cell's kind of version of endoplasmic reticulum. It's just that it's called sarcoplasmic reticulum because it's a muscle, muscle cell. When the calcium that just entered the cell through the calcium channel and bound to the receptor on the sarcoplasmic reticulum, then this causes the sarcoplasmic reticulum to actually release even more calcium. This is because it had calcium stored within its organelle. This leads to a sort of positive feedback event, which we call calcium-induced calcium release, because calcium traveling into the cell binds to something in the cytosol, which leads to even more calcium being released. Now, the cytosol has a major increase in calcium levels, and this will lead to muscle contraction of the muscle cells. Normally after this happens, then calcium will be released out of the cell through a pump. Namely, it will be released out of the cell through a sodium-calcium exchanger that pushes in three sodiums into the cell in exchange for a calcium back out of the cell. So now there will be a lot of sodiums within the cell because to remove calcium, we had to push in a lot of sodiums. And the way sodium then is taken out of the cell is through the sodium-potassium ATPase pump. Now this is where digoxine comes into play. Digoxine will block the sodium-potassium ATPase pump and this effectively leads to sodium accumulating within the cell. And now when sodium accumulates within the cell, then calcium which already is produced inside the cell cannot go out because the sodium-calcium exchanger needs to pump in sodium in exchange for calcium. But when sodium is accumulating more and more into the cell, the sodium-calcium exchanger will stop working essentially, it will stop pushing in sodium and taking out calcium. So what happens to this calcium then? The calcium can actually be pushed into the sarcoplasmic reticulum for further storage for even more calcium via a calcium ATPase pump that is located on the sarcoplasmic reticulum. So when we give digoxine, it causes 
more storage to be formed of calcium within the sarcoplasmic reticulum. Increase of calcium then leads to the observed increase in inotropic effects. The heart rate is, however, also reduced due to the indirect increase in vagal tone. For the effects of digoxin, the direct effects will be positive inotropy. So, as we said, this is when there is an increased force of contraction of the myocardial cells. It will also have a positive bathmotropic effect, which is when there is an increased excitability of the muscle cells. Now, indirectly, it will stimulate the vagus nerve which stimulates the parasympathetic activity and this will lead to a decrease in heart rate so a negative chronotropic effect as well as it will slow down the conduction speed within the av node and this is why it has a negative dromotropic effect however this is indirectly because of the vagus stimulation digoxine in excess doses can lead to digoxine intoxication especially in patients with an underlying hypokalemia state, which is when they have low potassium levels, then this can predispose the patient to digoxine toxicity. This is due to the fact that digoxine normally will compete with potassium for the same binding site on the sodium potassium ATPase pump. If they do develop intoxication, then a common symptom is xanthopsia. Xanthopsia is when the patient will see everything with a yellow filter. This is interesting, and uh, the painter Vincent van Gogh is actually believed to be affected by this condition due to taking too much digitalis plant. This is believed to have a major influence on his paintings, as you can see here. However, this is purely speculative, but it's an interesting theory. The treatment for intoxication of uh, digoxine is with uh, digoxine-specific immunoglobulin fragments, which is also known as FAB. If the patient develops AV conduction disorders due to it, we can give atropine. And uh, in electrolyte imbalances, we can give potassium aspartate and potassium chloride, as well as magnesium. The next class of medication that we will talk about are the beta-adrenergic agonists. We have dopamine, which is a natural occurring catecholamine, which acts as a receptor agonist to the D1 receptor. In low doses, it leads to vasodilation of the kidneys, of the renal artery, of the splanchnic, coronary, and vessels in the brain. However, in high doses, it acts as a B1 receptor in the heart, and this is why high doses actually leads to similar symptoms as when the patient is given adrenaline. So then it leads to directly the opposite. It leads to vasoconstriction of all these uh, vessels. Dobutamine is the second most widely prescribed inotropic agent after digoxine, and this is a synthetic cut. Tecolamine, so it's made in the lab. It's also B1 selective and it's a positive inotropic agent. In higher doses, it will also have the effect on the alpha 1 adrenergic receptors, and this may cause an increase in oxygen demand of the heart, and subsequently, this can lead to angina and uh, chest pain. They both work by binding to beta adrenergic receptors and then activating adenylyl cyclase which then increases the intracellular levels of cyclic AMP which will activate a protein kinase and the protein kinase then can phosphorylate calcium channels so that more calcium can reach the myocardial muscle cells. So this is the way that they also increase inotropy, contraction, cardiac output etc. They are given short-term intravenously in cases of acute heart failure in a hospital environment. These are not medications that are taken prophylactically. That was all for this video. I hope it was helpful. I hope it was understandable. And if you liked it, please like and subscribe and uh, check out our other videos. Thank you for watching.